Good evening, everyone, or welcome everyone to uh, to our meeting. I hope you can all hear me. Don't try to show. If someone can. Um, okay, yeah, it works. Okay, perfect. Well, um, I'll uh, I'll give you the floor, Kateri, um, and uh, please tell us for everything you did and uh, are doing now. Uh, and I want to remind everyone to um, to think of questions uh, because we'll have a discussion after 15 minutes. And then, um, well, uh, so please think of these questions and, and uh, make sure that you can you can ask them afterwards. So uh, the floor is all yours, Kateri. Thank you. Not sure about how to pronounce your, your name, so I'm guessing is <laughs> Rolf or correct? Yeah, you can. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry about it. Great. Thank you. Um, so well, I cannot um, share my story without introducing my parents. Um, almost 50 years ago, my parents met and decided to get married when they were really young. My dad was 18 and my mom 17. So just imagine that. They thought that they would be blessed with a very large family. However, that did not happen as quickly as they had hoped. My parents had to wait 18 years for their firstborn. And that's me. And now I have two younger brothers and because of the age difference, I have always felt the pressure of being a good example for them. As I was telling you, I was born and raised in Costa Rica, surrounded by a loving and supporting family and wonderful friends. However, I was constantly hearing about how I was a miracle and that my life had a higher purpose. Therefore, I grew up believing it was my duty to be the best at everything. In other words, to always do my best because I had to succeed in order to live up to the high expectations that were placed on me. During high school, I was focused on getting good grades so that I could get into a good university. It was thanks to, my, to the guidance and encouragement of my social studies and humanities professors that, that inspired me to think about what I could do to help make the world a better place. Near the school, there was a very poor community where we would go and do volunteer work. I got to see people who live in inhuman conditions and I decided that it was unacceptable and that I had to do something about it. This, that is why after high school, I started studying international relations because I knew that I wanted to make a difference in my community and in the whole world. After learning about many of the issues affecting the region and the world, I decided I wanted to get a deeper understanding of human behavior, which I think is the root cause of those issues. So I could somehow be more efficient at helping others overcome them. And this is why I pursued a second major in sociology. Also, during that time, I did two internships, one at the Brazilian Embassy in Costa Rica and the other one in the Costa Rican Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This was very beneficial because I got work experience before graduating, and it, it also helped me start networking. And actually, my first internship led me to realize the importance of speaking other languages. The truth is that I had been very fortunate and I was able to attend a very good private school in Costa Rica, which gave me the opportunity to learn English. But I found a passion to, uh, for Portuguese. Um, so I decided um, to sign up for classes. During my final semester of my undergraduate degree in international relations, I realized that not only I was willing to travel abroad for a job, but that it was necessary to broaden my horizons and learn about the world from different perspectives. I took the chance and started searching for and applying to jobs outside Costa Rica. During that time, um, I was excited, but nervous at the same time. <laughs> excited for the opportunity and the skills and the knowledge that I knew I would acquire to help implement a positive change but anxious because of the possibility of failure and disappointing, and disappointing basically those around me. After some months, I got a job offer in Mexico City. I moved there and joined an international nonprofit 
called World Youth Alliance, or WAYA. This nonprofit trains young people from all over the world in human rights and international public law. I started as an intern for a month and later, and later on served there for seven years as their director of operations for Latin America and the Caribbean. During that time, I had the opportunity to meet wonderful young people from all over the world, travel to most Latin American countries, and participate in activities and meetings at the United Nations and at the, uh, at the Organization of American States. Actually, it was at the United Nations where I got the opportunity to know about IFFD. Last year, through the power of LinkedIn, I was contacted and offered a job by another nonprofit organization called Latin American Leadership Academy, or LALA, that is based in Medellin, Colombia, and this is where I'm currently living and working as their director of operations. LALA promotes sustainable economic development and strengthens democratic governance in Latin America by finding, connecting, and developing a new generation of young leaders from the region. Therefore, this organization aims to find and help young people from remote parts of Latin America, or even from the poorest communities, to achieve their dreams, implement positive change, and impact society. Also, during my time in Mexico, I was able to continue my studies and pursue a master's degree in public administration. And later on in Colombia, I obtained my second master's degree in project management, both of which helped me advance in my career and forge connections to people that would later on open doors for me. And even though I'm happy with what I have accomplished so far, guess what? <laughs> there are things I wish I had known sooner when I was your age. And this is why I would like to share with you all three things that I have learned from my experiences and that I hope will help you as you transition from your studies into your working field. The very first thing is that growing, it's all about decisions and not necessarily about you being the best at everything. Actually, it's not even about making the right decisions, but spending time energy and putting in the effort to ensure that whatever you choose to do works out. Therefore, if you have the possibility and the willingness to follow your passions and your interests, and at the same time can contribute to improve the life of others around you, like for example, serving your community, I encourage you to do so, as this will provide lots of satisfaction and happiness but also because you can inspire others to do the same. And this could lead to a multiplying effect. The second thing is that in most cases, things are going to work out in the best way possible. I know that at your age and in life in general, it is really important to design and plan your life. This is mostly because you're thinking about things like uh, how it can be useful or what's going to happen next, or even dealing with the expectations that you have already created for yourself. A lot of these expectations come from internal and or external pressures. And chances are that you're thinking about stuff like the need to get a job quickly to receive a financial compensation, wanting to support your family financially, choosing your career based on the labor market and not your passion or interest or reaching to certain goals, certain lifestyle or job positions, or even comparing yourself to others and so on. But for the things to really work out, you need to be able to deal with uncertainty and to embrace the possibility of change. I really believe that without change, there's no progress. Just take a look at my life, for example. I took the chance and decided to move to a, a different country twice. And because of that, I have lived through so many experiences, acquire new knowledge and gain very valuable friendships. The last thing that I would like to tell you is that there's always room for improvement. While it is true that college is the only time that your full-time job is to learn, although maybe not for everyone, there are always more things to explore in life. 
we're currently living in a world where we are constantly required to keep learning new skills. And I'm not talking just about working experience or education, but also about your personal development. So take the chance to jump on new opportunities. For example, meeting new people or experiencing internships or exploring new interests that are aligned to your values or seeking mentorship or even investing time and energy in important relationships with people that will support and guide you. And by doing that, your future self wins. Finally, I just want to appreciate um, the time and, and for, for this opportunity and mostly the trust of our ability. Thank you all. Thank you, Kateri. I hope, by the way, I hope I pronounced your name right as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing Perfectly. Okay. Um, thank you for your talk. Um, it was really interesting. Um, if anyone else has a question, of course, you can turn on your camera and uh, also ask something in person. Um, what I was perhaps thinking, um, of course, the, the general age in, in South America or Latin America is um, uh, quite young. So um, for, for me as a European or a Dutchman, uh, this, is, this is something different. Is it something that can help with, um, uh, well, since there are many young people, uh, you can help each other out or is it, uh, how do you find it? How is youth leadership in, in Latin America, uh, how does it come about? Um, that's actually a really interesting question. Um, so, so it's true, like <laughs> that um, in Latin America, when whenever you go to let's say high school and then um, go to college, and then um, even if you go to college, because sometimes you just jump from high school to to looking for for working opportunities. Um, even if you go to 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 college and you graduate from college. Um, you do that in a very young age. Um, so, so the truth is that so many young people in, in Latin America don't, don't take the time even to, to think about those things. They, they don't even reflect on what kind of passions or interests they might want to follow because there's a financial pressure. So they have to look for a job and they have to, to bring that um, resources to, to their household. Um, so it's complicated in that sense. That's a systemic problem throughout the region. What we try to do and what I have been uh, mostly investing a lot of my time is um, trying to identify huge um, potential young leaders through the region that, um, that they already have this um, social impact um, feeling or willingness to do something and uh, basically connecting them through all, all, all different um, young leaders of the region and um, trying to developing um, new skills, but also connecting that to, let's say, larger networks. So sometimes they don't have those resources, but by connecting them to these larger uh, networks, they get the support and they can start implementing change. Um, so, so yeah, mo mostly like that. I don't know if I, I was really able to respond to your question. I think I think you did your best. Um, no, no, it's it's. Thank you for your answer. Uh, I also see that uh, two others are um, now. Um, <laughs> we can see them with, with our camera. Um, um, perhaps can I, uh, Ivan? Can I ask you if if you want to ask something? You can. Yeah. Okay. This is more probably a personal question because like last Wednesday was the International Day for Elimination of Violence Against Women. And considering it's kind of dangerous because I am from Peru, I have lived also in Argentina, Latin America is not secure as like Europe, the United States, and I'm not talking only about like assaults or other kind of harassment. But what you learned, where you found the literally the courage, because I think it's inspiring for all of us to like, despite of all the challenges to decide to move to Mexico, that is also uh, Tierra de Fuego for mm -hmm. something like drugs and stuff. So how can 
young people overcome these challenges, these fears, and move like outside as you did? Thank you for for your question, and and I totally relate to what you're saying. I, uh, for for me, it's 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 very evident how um, throughout Latin America there has been a tendency lately of of knowing a lot of like violence and cases against like women, um, and, and that's really concerning. Um, and uh, at a very personal level, of course, it's 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 um, it also it always affects, right? <laughs> because I'm a woman, I'm living in a different country and everything. Um, however, like just to to answer your questions, um, I try to to find the courage in this idea that I I already found a passion, and and I want to serve the society in that sense. I want to serve my community in that sense. So I found that that willingness of keep doing things, of, of course, at the same time, protecting myself, but putting my energy, my time, uh, all the resources that I have in order to, to not only this idea of youth empowerment or youth development, but also how can we really invest in the youth so they can become the change makers of the present and the future. So if we start investing on those things, there are systemic problems that are very characterizing uh, characterizing our, our region right now. It's not only violence against women, but we can talk about poverty, about youth unemployment, a lot of things, right? Um, so if you invest in those things, invest in, 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 in really finding these young leaders from all over the world, connecting them uh, into other kind of resources that they don't maybe they don't have access or very uh, or even the visualizing opportunities uh, we can invest on on their uh, present and future but also that will impact your the society and the region so so i find the courage in, in that very good thank you for your answer kateri um perhaps if uh, remy uh, are you, can you say, can you ask something? Yes, yes, okay. thank you, Rulof. Katri, thank you very much for, for your uh, presentation. I, I was wondering if maybe you could develop um, a few of, 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 the, of the activities that you are uh, working on uh, in Colombia. And uh, yeah, and then I was about to ask about the, the, the other challenges of, uh, of the various countries you've explored, but you just replied, so thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah, just uh, de developing on your personal uh, activities in Colombia. Sure. Um, thank you for your question, Remy. Um, so right now, LALA, Latin American Leadership Academy, is um, this organization that um, it's currently, um, so it was created three years ago. And, and what we're trying to do is finding these young people from all over Latin America. We are providing a very first level of training, which is boot camps. Well, right now, because of the global crisis, everything has changed a little bit and we had to adapt. But originally, this was like an in-person program. So we would bring uh, the best young people that we could find all together into different countries. And they would have to undergo a training, uh, a very intense training, actually, of seven days where they would not only connect to other young people from, from different countries, um, share their challenges, but also learn tools that will help them develop these ideas of, of impact, like social impact into something, into action, basically. So that's our very first level of, 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 of activity. Earlier this year, we started with the second phase, that uh, it's what we call the academy, as the name says, Latin American Leadership Academy. So the idea of the academy is that we would select from all of, the, all of these young leaders that go to the boot camps, we would select something around 10 to 15% and bring them all together to Medellin, where Lala is based right now, Medellin, Colombia. And the idea is for them to go, um, to, to join the, um, as a community of change makers, but also to undergo a very intense training that would, would now not be a seven day training, but a, at least a three month training, 
where we would bring um, educators from all over the world and experts from all over the world so they can like gain that knowledge access to certain resources and the idea at the end of the academy is that the the this um willingness that they have that they want to put into action they actually put it into action so after the academy you would see things like um other nonprofits uh being developed or even other little companies being developed and 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 we have seen a lot of these cases or even it's it's not a, even just the idea of developing a thing it's also pursuing your dreams we had the case of an alumni for example that she, she her dream so she's she's from this very poor community in colombia choco colombia and and her dream has always been to become the very first woman um, serving as the Minister of Education in Colombia. And she's, she comes from this very poor community, so it's very difficult for her to get there, right? Because it's, it's a woman, Chocó, it's, 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 it's not in the center of the country, it's in the coast, so there's a lot of things there. She enrolled the, pro the, the program, she she wasn't part of the academy, but was part of the boot camps, which is this very first level that I was telling you. Um, she got some scholarships. She went to some programs abroad. When she came back, she was able to apply to certain jobs in the Ministry of, um, I mean, of Education. And right now, she's currently working there. And she's super young. So now she's already starting um, her, her way up to what she, what her dream is, right? And in a way, putting that in this, as serving the community. So, so yeah, mostly I, I work as the director of operations. So that's what I do, making that happen, <laughs> implementing those programs, but that's mostly what we do. Superb. And, and does that give way to some kind of certification, like an official, officially recognized degree or, or, or still uh -huh. something, I, I mean, yeah yeah hopefully so we don't yeah we don't submit any or give them any sort of like certification however a lot of our our alumni because of this um willingness and everything that they are currently doing they have um been winning a lot of scholarships to ivy leagues in the us um and full scholarships so so we are really excited because not only for them accessing that quality that say in a way quality of education but also um, knowing that they care a lot about their communities that everything that they will learn there they will bring it back to to the countries so so yeah Super. that's part of the process <laughs> well congratulations thank you thanks very good, very good. It's really impressive if you if you tell it this way. Um, you know, this this example of what you said about this um, the girl from a poor uh, background and so on. Um, perhaps it's also a, a question that I was having. Um, by the way, if anyone else wants to ask someone, please go ahead. Uh, please, uh, you can always, of course, join in. Um, but the question I was having, I saw that it was uh, like uh, the ages of fourteen to eighteen. Uh, some people, some the children come to the uh, workshops or the or the young people, they come to uh, to the boot camps. And uh, do you find it, is it easy for them to uh, participate? And is it, are they easily engaged? Is it, are they very uh, confident of themselves? Or uh, that must be really inspiring, I imagine. Yeah, it is, it really, it's really inspiring. So, so I, I would say that um, it's not a matter of age. It's a, it's a matter of like their personality and, what they feel it's their purpose in life. So whenever these kids, even as, as young as 14, 15, they come and join these boot camps. And we have had boot camps where you had kids from, let's say, that they are around 20, 24. So there's a huge gap, right, between a kid from 20, for, I mean, uh, that is 14 and 24. But because they have this willingness to serve the community, uh, these these age difference not necessarily affects. They actually share they share their challenges and express how they feel. And and because they are like doing this sense of community, uh, whenever you have somebody saying or sharing something like that, the whole group will come and support that person. And that's how we have been um, 
understanding the dynamic that happens at the boot camp. At the same time, what we do is that we try to to really understand this idea of leadership as uh, more of like an integral kind of wholesome uh, concept of, of leadership that includes the human side of it. So part of, of, of the things that they get to see at the, at the boot camps it's, it's this idea of why the personal development, it's important. It's a really important piece for them to become change makers. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, I think it's it's really um, inspiring to to have you tell this this vision about also um, it, for instance for me sometimes uh, organizations can feel like a real uh, a robotic operation. So um, it's it's a real automaton, uh, you know, marching onwards uh, towards progression and uh, to to be able to to have these human influences and this uh, social interaction uh, uplifting each other. That uh, I think is really important. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you for, for having your talk um, and inspiring us all. So um, I hope to, uh, to see you in, in the near future as well. The, the same role. And now um, my pleasure to, to share a little bit of, of, of what I have been doing. I know it sounds in a way that I have everything figured out, but the truth is that I, I keep learning. <laughs> um, I'm still figuring out things and, and more than happy to share my experience and, and hopefully uh, that that helps you uh, find motivation and um, and just willingness to, to continue your your transition to this work field well i want i want to thank everyone as well uh, for their participation um and i uh, and hope to see uh, <laughs> i hope we, we <laughs> well this this can become a group of friends of course and uh, and perhaps some of us will uh, will meet again in two weeks um so perhaps ignacio do you want to say something as well i see well, you just to thank uh, katari for being here today yeah. for his, for her inspiring talk and uh, yes and also tell all of you that you can invite your friends if you want to these talks okay if you think they it will be useful for them and thanks very much to all of you for coming today thank all you right. thank you thank you again all right